we're sticking on the young bucks here. They on Dynamite yesterday, as we record this, two days ago when this is released, did a sit down interview with Renee Paquette, and yep. it went about what three and a half, four minutes. And they're sort of it's not their debut of their new look, but it's their first interview, and they're coming across as heels. You watched it; it was it was vague at points what they were talking about. We follow news every week, and I didn't know what they were yep. hinting at at times. But what do you think of the interview? Well, they must have listened to me on some of my former podcasts when I says when I said and critiqued. AEW's backstage interviews. I said that that looks like an independent show, an independent promotion shot it in a barn. But at least on this one with Renee <laughs> and the Bucks, produced well, lit well, the sound was well. I mean, it was good. And they got a point across. Now, I think they're talking about what happened a year ago with CM Punk and, and all that stuff. And I think the people who know that know exactly what they're talking about. And they didn't bring it up. I think that was a legal issue. They didn't need to bring it up. But I think everybody knew what they were talking about. And I think the Young Bucks came across a lot better than they usually do because they usually look like they're a, a couple of guys that ride and serve, uh, riding little skateboards in front of your house or down the street. That's what they act like. But you, you can't get anybody to believe that they're serious contenders to beat anybody. up. See their whole match consists <laughs> of about 12 super kicks. I mean, you can count them one, two, three, Four. And finally, after you hit the guy's much, you, know, you say, him, go down. Please go down. Take a bump. Do something. You get a sore thigh after all that. But but, but I think this, is, this was produced pretty well, I think. And uh, I don't know who produced it. Maybe Renee did. But they, they got their point across and got up and left. So I don't, I don't think it was bad. I actually think it was a better look for their backstage productions because Renee is very good. She's, she's very, very good. And, uh, I, I, I thought it was good. And, you know, sometimes I don't put over AEW that much, but it was a, it was a, it was a, a good interview. I, I did have a bit of course of me, of course me and you would have made it better. If we'd <laughs> of, have of course. Yeah. See, am I Renee or am I one of the books? No, you be one of the books. That's I'll fine. be I'll be Renee. Good. I like to look. I like to look. I, I want to cross my legs. Yeah, is what I want. Short skirt. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually, I had, I had a bit of a different takeaway from this, and the books. If uh, you listen closely, they make mention of, and this came across as very WCW. Is that when we started AEW, it was all sunshine and rainbows. We had a vision. Yes. And then they basically say, in in more recent times, AEW has lost their way. And this is what WCW used to do from 1999 when it started going down the pan. Is even on commentary they used to say we need to get WCW back on top. We need to improve WCW. And it's like why would you say that on screen? Because mm-hmm. now you're giving the sort of viewer, the listener, person who's picking up on this kind of thing, the idea that hey maybe AEW isn't as good as it used to be, or yes it has changed, or make you know. It's one of those things that that, that jarred me when I heard it. Well, see, one of the things <clears throat> AEW is, was original. Well, not original, but there's nothing original about wrestling hardy anymore. Well, they are a few things. Uh, Tony Storm's one of them, and we'll talk about her a little bit later. But uh, I think what they were announcing is we're no, no longer in the market for the talent from WWE. We're not going to pay out the, the big, big money. I think Tony has finally realized that <clears throat> signing Edge didn't have any concrete effect on the ratings or the attendance, really. He's, they know him, but I, I think just bringing over guys for the sake of bringing them over, yeah, you got them. Okay, now what you going to do with them? But 
I think that was their way of announcing we're no longer in the market for that. We're going to do our own stuff. And I'd like that AEW do their own stuff, but yet at the same time, they take these guys who are have a ton of talent, but yet at the same time, they don't teach them the main thing of how to draw money, and that's character. That's how to do an interview, how to walk, how to do this. It's the little things that you see the, the veterans do, and you don't notice it, but you do notice it. But you take some of those guys, they sound like they're so, like the third month in wrestling school. They go out to, hey, and but now you got to start somewhere. But I remember, who, who told me this? I remember, uh, who was one of the New Days? What was his name? Xavier Woods, Big E. Xavier, Xavier Woods. He was in, I think he was in, uh, before NXT, they had like at an Atlanta training camp. No, I think he may have been talking about NXT. They have a room there where you can go in and just do interviews on your own <clears throat> and then look at it back. And he said he spent more time in that room than he did in the ring, which was smart, actually, because he was developing a character that people can relate to. See, wrestlers are no more than physical uh, comedians. You know, they try to do, see, a comedian tries to tell a joke that lands. You know, he gets a pop out of the crowd. Well, wrestlers try to do a move that lands. People go, <laughs> I remember I used to, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little Barry Horwich now. I'm going to pat myself on the back. I used to do the short clothesline because nobody had seen it. And it was easy to take. And I'm thinking, why hasn't anybody come up with this before? So I would do it. And if the guy, of course, you couldn't do it to everybody, but you you'd do it to a guy that could, I mean, really take a good bump, bam. And the people would go, <clears throat> because it was so quick and so sudden, it shocked them a little bit. And I remember doing it with Jake the Snake. And they said it was his first match. He was in Fort Worth, Texas. And I did it to Jake, and he took a hell of a bump, and the people responded. We got back to the dressing room, and I always thought, I said, that he beat me that night, but he didn't. I actually looked back at a, I can still show you the program. We actually, we, we did a Broadway. We went 15 minutes Broadway, and a Broadway meant that you, you went through. You went to the time limit draw. And Jake come up to me, hey, man. <laughs> he said, uh, <clears throat> I like that, that clothesline you gave me. I said, oh, yeah, thanks. He says, that's a good one. He says, I'm stealing it. And he stole it right then and there. But at least he told me he took it. So now then when Jake would get in there and do that short clothesline, then the people would see me do it. And the people say, hey, your clothesline is almost as good as Jake's. You, you took it from Jake, right? <laughs> Too long a story to say, no, it's actually actually reverse so i just said yeah i took it from jake but <laughs> but that's what the guys need to work on in aew is their character their personality to set themselves apart we're all doing wrestling but why why can't a guy and we're going to talk about this a little later samoa joe don't do a lot of stuff but he's over and we'll talk about him in a minute mm -hmm. but and his interviews are good, though. You believe his interviews because he talks sensibly. He talks in a fashion that makes sense. <clears throat> and when you think about it, you say, yeah, he, he does have a point. And he talks about it in such a way he, he doesn't really uh, downgrade the fan. Now, the Bucks were trying to downgrade the fans, not trying to do that. And it kind of some, some, somehow worked. I kind of got a little hot at him before they left. I, if I'd have been on set, I'd have hopped on there and started beating the crap out of him with a stick. That's what I'd have done. Is that a heat getting flat cap for you? I love that. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about the outfits then. I, I love that. Yeah. 
And I, I love the shoes, no socks. Love that. You know, they got that look going on, <clears throat> which it, it gets heat. It gets heat, I think. I, I think it does. You say, look at that son of a. And when's the last time you saw somebody look like that? <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know? Do you know when it was? And I'll tell you. Is when uh, Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes had a face off, and Ric Flair was dressed exactly the same way with like this sort of this sort of color thing, and he yeah. had a flat cap. And it's a really famous one where Dusty Rhodes goes, "Let me just go take that ugly hat off your head," and then he throws it away, and then they have a big fight. But yeah, yeah. I, I think it's an homage to uh, Ric Flair. Forty if, years. If you had, okay, if you had to say an, an era, an era in history. Where would that hat be from? The fifties? Oh, I don't know. Sixties? It wasn't in the seventies and eighties. I know that. No, it's with the little mustache as well. It's almost like a spiv kind. Oh of yeah, yeah. It's almost like 40s, an Earl yeah. Earl Flynn. Yeah, the Earl Flynn. Yeah, like look, a thirties kind of thing going on. Yeah, I think I, it's I, probably uh, probably was, where it was from. I was going to say, like, he's doing the open chest thing as well, but he has no chest hair. I think that should be it should be illegal. Unless oh, you have chest hair and a nice medallion, I could do that. Oh, and I actually you. put I, I actually put my suit on backwards and just show my back hair. <laughs> 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 yeah, 